Hi there, I hope you're having a really good day. I thought I'd bring you along as I prepare these butternut squash for long-term storage. But first I have to confess, I didn't grow any of these squash. A friend grew some and she shared with me, she gave me a couple, and then I happened to stop at a roadside stand and they had the butternut squash as well as the honey nut squash for an irresistible price. So I went ahead and stocked up on them because as we're going to learn, butternut squash store really well. So we'll have fresh vegetables later this winter when nothing else is growing. You just have to make sure you store them properly. Now, first of all, when you pick your butternut squash, you can actually encourage better long-term storage right when you pick it. So the way to do that is you wanna actually leave a little bit of the stem on this is from my friend Heather. See how she left about maybe an inch, an inch and a half of the stem on here? That's going to help that store better. If you wanna eat it right away, there's no worry. You don't have to keep the stem on, but we're talking about long-term storage. So leave some of the stem on. This honey nut squash, unfortunately, that I picked up at that roadside stand, they didn't leave anything on here. So this isn't gonna be as good for long-term Make storage. sure when you harvest your fruit that it's good and firm. If it's squishy, it's definitely not going to last. Also, if it has any uh, puncture wounds or dings, such as this one, that's probably going to be susceptible to rotting. Uh, now it is kind of scabbed over at this point, but I'm definitely gonna eat this one sooner rather than later to make sure the whole uh, fruit isn't uh, compromised. A blemish that you see like this, this just happens to be where this fruit was laying in the field. So over time they will develop some uh, marks and scabs but as long as they're firm to the touch that's okay. This is very normal. So after you've harvested your butternut squash, or maybe you bought it from a roadside stand like me, you've checked to make sure there's no blemishes, no gaping wounds where uh, liquid is seeping out. Now it's time to cure the butternut squash. And that's basically the trick to long-term storage. It's going to help give the butternut squash a firm, thick skin that won't be easily broken. And um, also, the other part of it is we're going to dry them out a little bit. Um, so it's recommended that you store them at 80 to 85 degrees for 10 to 14 days. And like I said, that's gonna pull out some of the moisture. It will also condense the water that's in them and make them much sweeter. Um, and so there's multiple ways you can do this. If you live in a warmer climate, you can certainly just um, put them in a clean garden bed and just rotate them every couple of days and uh, just make sure that you know nothing's eating them or, or harming them Here in, in any way. Here in Pennsylvania, we are having an unseasonably warm fall. So it's about 75 degrees today and with the warmth from the soil and the sun shining down on them, I think that's pretty good. I think they'll be um, close to 80 degrees perhaps. Um, and so I'm just letting them cure right in the garden. But um, other years it's not that warm. And so you can certainly take them into your home. I've heard of tricks where you like store them in a bedroom or even your bathroom with a space heater and get it up to temperature. Um, also, if you happen to have a wood burner or a pellet stove or something like that, storing them near that for a few days, uh, for 10 to 14 days, um, should help cure them. You'll know they're cured and ready for long-term storage when you take your fingernail and press in and it won't make a mark. This is very close. It's not digging in very much. Once your squash have cured for 10 to 14 days and their skins are nice and firm, it's time to put them in storage. I like to wrap mine in newspaper. It's not a necessary step, but I just think it helps a little bit with that storage. It helps to keep them separate. So if one were to get a blemish and have um, some sort of, you know, 
disease or rot rotting, um, it won't spread as easily to the other ones. You want to store them in a container that has airflow. So this crate is perfect. Um, you don't have to get anything special though. You can use a box and punch some holes in it. That would be just fine. You want to store your squash at about 50 to 55 degrees. Again, you want it to be somewhere that gets some airflow. Um, as I mentioned, we have a wood stove, so our basement is way too warm. It's usually like 80 to 90 degrees down there, so they wouldn't last long. But if you have a root cellar or a regular cellar and um, it's not too warm down there, that would be a great place. You could also use a dark closet um, that may be in a spare bedroom or something like that. Um, you can put a thermometer in to be checking the temperature and you regularly want to check on the squash to make sure you're not getting any rotting going on. If they do get soft spots, a lot of times you can just use those and eat them quickly, just making sure it didn't get into the flesh that you're going to eat. <laughs> you're probably wondering, what is she doing? Well, I'm actually in the shower. This is our breezeway bathroom. We're so blessed to have a bathroom right in our breezeway. It's very convenient, but it's not insulated. And so once winter comes, even the fall comes, no one really wants to use it because it's pretty chilly out here. So this year I've decided to use the bathroom, the shower in particular, as a place of storage. So I'm gonna try storing my squash in the shower of our breezeway this year. I'm gonna keep a thermometer out here and check on them regularly to make sure it doesn't drop too low. I don't have a root cellar. Um, I don't have a good crawl space that I could use. And so I'm all about just finding what you have, what works for you, and just making the best of what you've got. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you'll tune in next time. Have a great day. Bye.